All right, some more quadratic equations here with uh, 7, 2. Here we want to solve them. So we're talking about factoring. We're talking about the quadratic formula. Remember, the quadratic formula works all the time. Factoring just gives you a shortcut, okay, when you can do it. Uh, the zero product property mentioned here, we've been using that in the last videos where you set each factor for zero and solve. And uh, quadratic equations, real world, that's what we're going to do here. All right, find the smallest solution of 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. Let's go over here. Let's get rid of this. All right, so we're starting off with 2x squared minus 5x plus 3 equals 0. Now, to factor this, because our a uh, isn't 1, it's 2, we'd have to do fabulous factoring. I know a lot of you guys struggle with that, so I'm just going to use the quadratic formula. Let me change the color on here so it stands out. Remember, it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, this will give you a chance to see this. So, let's take a look here on how we're going to do this. So, again, a, b, c. So x is going to equal negative of b. Well, b is negative 5, so the negative of that makes it a positive 5. Plus or minus the square root. Negative 5 squared minus 4 times my a times my c. And this whole thing is over 2 times a. Don't forget that. Some of you guys forget to include that. So we got 5 plus or minus the square root. Negative 5 squared is 25. And we got minus 4 times 2 is negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. All over 4. So x is equal to 5 plus or minus the square root of 1. All over 4. 25 minus 24 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So we got 5 plus or minus 1 over 4. Remember, that's two solutions. Okay, you got the plus and the minus. We have 5 plus 1 over 4. That's 6 over 4, which simplifies to 3 over 2, 1.5 for you guys that are scared of those de uh, fractions. 5 minus 1 over 4, 4 over 4, we get 1. So there are our answers right there, 1 and 1 half. And it said, what's the smallest solution? 1. Okay, so you either put the 1 here or the 1 here, just don't put it in the middle. All right. Three halves was the solution, but it was the bigger one. Solve by using the quadratic formula, just like what we just did. Um, let's come over here. Change that. And let's change that. I'll keep the formula right here. So we've got y equal to uh, 2x squared minus 16x plus 26 equal to 0. There's our a, there's our b, there's our c. So it's just a plug and chug. Minus a negative 16, again that's positive 16 just like the last problem. We're going to get 16 squared, negative 16 squared minus 4 times our a times our c all over 2 times our a so that's going to give us 16 plus or minus negative 16 squared is 256 negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 negative 8 times 26 That's 208. So we got a negative 208 or minus it. Okay, and that's all over 4. So x is equal to 16 plus or minus the square root. Uh, 256 minus uh, 208 is what? 48. All over 4. That's 16 
plus or minus. Now 48 is 16 times 3. Right? This right here is 16 times 3. And you can take the square root of the 16. It's 4. So that 4 stays in here. The 3 goes outside. Kind of highlight that. Um, that we covered in, in a couple sections ago with radicals. Now the 4, we're going to both of these right here. Okay, 4 goes into 16 four times. And we, we did some problems like this too. When it's 1, a monomial down here, it goes into both. Plus or minus the 4's cancel out. Boom, there's my answer right there. 4 plus or minus 3, square root of 3. Boom, A. Okay. Moving right along. Problem 3, which of the following equations cannot be solved by factoring? Uh, well, let's just take a look here. When A is 1, we should be able to take factors of C that add up to the B term. And factors of 4 that add up to 5 or 4 and 1. So that's factorable. You can do that. There are factors there. Subtract the 22 over. We'd have a negative 22 here. So we would need factors of 22 that we can subtract and get negative 9. 22 is 11 times 2. And 2 minus 11 is negative 9. So that's factorable. Are there factors of 6 that add up to 1? Our B is 1. No. 3 and 2 add up to 5, and 6 and 1 add up to 7. So the one that cannot be factored is C. Okay? So problem 3, the answer is C. Problem 4. <clears throat> a 12 by 20 foot pool is surrounded by a deck of uniform width X feet. Uh, the area of the deck and the pool is combined to 768 square feet. Use the diagram in the pool on its deck to determine the width of the deck. Well, the deck width is 12 plus 2x. Its length is 20 plus 2x. We always take the smaller one to be the width as a general rule. So with that, let's take a look at how we're going to solve this. They want to know they give us this dimension. It's 12 by 20. If we take the area of the whole thing, length times width, we'll multiply these two, and we subtract the area of the pool, what's left is the area of the deck. Okay? Um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's do this. We know that uh, this times this is equal to this. So let's just do that. Let's multiply these two to equal this. Uh, then we'll set the quadratic equal to zero. We'll solve for our x, and then we'll plug our x back in to find our width. That's what we want to do. So what I'm talking about is this. So we've got a pool. It's a rectangle. So we know that area equals length times the width. All right. Our length is 20 plus 2x. Our width is 12 plus 2x. And we know that length times width equals the area, which is 768. Okay. So, what we want to do to solve the quadratic, we can't set these equal to zero because this isn't zero. So we got to uh, foil this, multiply it out, subtract the 768 over so this is equal to zero. Then we go back to either factoring or quadratic it to find our x. Then we can plug our x back into this one and find our width. Okay. So 20 times 12 is 240. 20 plus 2x is 40x. 2 plus uh, 12 is 24x. I'm just foiling this. And 2x times 2x is plus 4x squared. I'm going to subtract our 768. So that equals 0. So let's combine like terms. Let's get it in standard form. Uh, we've got uh, 64x here. And then 240 minus the 768 is going to be a minus what? 528. Okay. Let's see, does 4 go into 528? I believe it does. 528 divided by 4 is 132. So I'm going to factor a 4 out of this just to make it smaller. Do you have to do that? No. But I'm doing it so that we have smaller numbers to work with. You could at this point say A is 4, B is 64, and C is negative 528. And go ahead and uh, do the quadratic here. But it's, it's a little easier when you're working with 116 and negative 132. Um, 
factors of 132 might be a little hard for some of you guys. Um, let's just go ahead and do our quadratic here. So x is going to be a negative b, which will be negative 16, plus or minus the square root. And I'm doing a quadratic again because we know that it always works. 4 times my a times my c is negative 132 all over 2 times 1. So I got negative 16 plus or minus the square root. We know 16 is 256. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times a negative 132. 132 times 4, we know it's 528. Yep. So we've got a plus 528 because you got a negative 4 times a negative 132 all over 2. So we get negative 16 plus or minus the square root. 256 plus uh, 528. That's going to be, let's see, 784, right? All over 2. What is the square root of 7? 7? 784. 28. So we've got negative 16 plus or minus 28 all over 2. Uh, so we, we know we have to have a positive x because this is a real problem. We need a length. So I'm going to take uh, the positive 28. So I'm going to take the negative 16 plus 28 all over 2. That's going to give me 12 over 2. That gives me an x equal to 6. Okay. So if x is equal to 6, we come back over here. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. Let's see, for number four. Oh, they want the width of the deck right there, six feet. That's our x. I'm sorry. I'm taking the whole width. They just want the width of the deck right here, our x. So it's six. There it is right there. I'm sorry. It was my mind here. Okay, so x is what we wanted, width of the deck, not the width of the whole uh, thing across there. We just wanted this width right here. Okay, so we found it there. It's our six. All right, sorry about that. Problem 5, solve 25x squared minus 30x equal to 0. Uh, here's another opportunity to do some factoring, uh, but we're going to do a greatest common factor here. Okay, It's not a trinomial, so don't try to do all of this business. You could do the quadratic because it works all the time as long as you, you're dealing with the quadratic and x squared. But I think we can do this a little differently. Uh, we're looking at... 25x squared minus 30x equal to 0, and they want us to solve this, so we're solving for x. So a greatest common factor here would be 5x. 5 goes into both of those, and then there's an x. You can take the one the smallest exponent. We've covered that before, too. So 5, and 5 is 25. I need another x there. There's my 25x. 5 goes into 36 times. The x cancel. So I get that. Set each factor equal to zero, because the only way you get zero when you multiply two things is if one of them is zero. So x is going to be zero here when we take zero divided by five. Add the six over, divide the five out, x is six fifths. Okay, so zero and six fifths. This is also one and one fifth. It's also 1.2. Let's see how they present the answers over here. Five six there it is, or six fifths, there it is right there. So your answer is D. Okay. And the last one, similar to what we did earlier, the area of a triangle is 100 square meters. Find the value of X, run us in there's hundredth. Okay. So they give us the area. We've got height, we got base. Area of a triangle is one half base times height. No, not unless Coach Power says. So one half base times height. So our area is 100. One half our base is x plus 4. And our height is x. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of my half. I know you guys don't like fractions, so bingo, there you go. 
very similar to the worksheets we've been working on here with um, getting rid of fractions, taking that least common multiple and multiplying it all the way across. So now I have that. And when I multiply the x through, I'm going to get x squared plus 4x. I'm going to subtract my 200 over. So I got it equal to 0. Uh, are there factors of 200 that differ by 4? Uh, probably. Some of you guys kind of struggle finding that. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the quadratic here. Negative b. So it's negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 because my a is 1 times the negative 200. That's my c. Whoops. All over 2 times 1. So, and I've got negative 4 plus or minus the square root 16. Negative 4 times a negative, so that's a positive 800 all over 2. So I get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 8, 16 all over 2. Can we take the square root of 8, 16? Let's see. 28.57. It said round to the nearest hundreds, so it's going to be 28. So we're going to get negative 4 plus or minus uh, 28.57 all over 2. Now again, we're dealing with the real world uh, situation here. We want to find the length for x, so i got to be positive. Uh, so this negative 4 plus the 28 is going to give me the positive. So negative 4 plus 28.57 all over 2. That's going to equal 24.57 all over 2. And half of that is 12.28, I think. Let's see. 24.57. Divided by 2. 12.29, if you really want to get technical here, which is what we're looking for, to the 100. 12.29. That's the answer we're looking for. 12.29 or 12.29. So put it on either end, just don't put it right in the middle. And the answer I gave is 12.28 uh, in the book. So, yeah, I'd say we're pretty good right there, 12.29, 12.28. We're good. Okay, that's it for uh, seven two. We'll be back to finish up with sets uh, D seven one and D seven two in the next video. Okay, see you then.